the story of an entrepreneur, who she is, where she comes from, how she got there, and what in the world she does every day is one that is often told, but yet it is mainly told as a story of exclusion, even if unintentionally. Now, the storyteller is usually a tall male from an Ivy League institution who inherited the genes and the financial gifts from his parents to build a thriving company. Or a middle-class young man who dropped out of high school and spent uncountable hours writing code to make it easier for us all to choose our next meal or date on an app. And sometimes it's a middle-aged woman from a challenging background who is addressing a social problem for thousands of kids who look just like hers. However, as they are told today, these stories make many of us think, well, wow, that was amazing, but I can never do that. It could never be me. I could never be that. As a child growing up in Sierra Leone, I was told that I should want that what I want, and what I should want is to become a medical doctor. Three degrees later from Ivy League institutions and a private sector research experience, I find myself as a data scientist within government, trying to do what many people told me and continue to tell me every day that I am not ready for. As the first chief innovation officer of the Republic of Sierra Leone and a technology and innovation advisor to the presidency. <laughs> thank you. I will tell stories today about how young men and women entrepreneurs on my team are helping the government deliver on its commitments to citizens through code and by engaging with various partners daily. Glenna Wilson, a young database engineer recently recruited from a bank, is working with a small local startup and the country's National Statistics Bureau to build interactive visualization tools to inform national planning and intervention policies. She lives with a grandmother and loves to sing at church on Sundays. Cabinet, a reggae musician with four studio albums and a three-year-old boy, builds testing platforms for us to evaluate the technologies we deploy for government services and citizen engagement. For these solutions to work for everyone, they have to function online and offline, on a feature phone or a smartphone, and for some, even when they have no phone credit. And that's exactly what we've done building a simple unit solution that scales algorithmically so it works for everyone. But of course, while we generally expect that innovation is happening within the private sector, we are resigned to expect the opposite in the public sector. Before leaving my job as a manager at IBM Research Africa to join President Bio's government, I was warned that I will stop learning quickly. This advice mostly came from people who love me. But after four months spent building a team who embrace creative freedom and are eager to build solutions that their own kids and parents can benefit from, I have learned more in this period than I could have ever imagined. My team has engaged public financial institutions to develop data architectures that will be compatible for a future driven by edge computing, Internet of Things, and big data analytics. If government is to fully address complex identity challenges, financial inclusion, and security for its citizens, it has to innovate and use state-of-the-art solutions. A couple of weeks ago, um, in a conversation with the vice president, uh, he mentioned to me that he used the results of a machine learning analysis we presented at a cabinet meeting to inform a fiscal intervention by his government. A recent collaboration with the country's vehicle registration agency and the anti-corruption commission has explored how government vehicles were misappropriated over a 10-year period. 
and is identifying the loopholes in current government vehicle ownership policy and transfer methods through data science. Mohamed James, a young computer scientist, and Michael George, a lawyer leading the policy team, closely collaborate on projects like this. And I'm proud to say that Michaela is not alone. Uh, over 60% of the data scientists on my team are women. Look, we're not the first ones who have built something like this in government. The United States Digital Services, developed by President Obama, for example, has had tremendous impact. Rwanda, Kenya, Ghana, and many other countries in Africa have developed the space for entrepreneurs, particularly in the private sector, to thrive. That same agility, greed, passion, and play used to learn and develop solutions in the private sector needs to be commonplace in government. And that's what we are on course to do in Sierra Leone. For me, these stories challenge our current understanding of who can and cannot innovate or be an entrepreneur. <clears throat> Excuse me. In my office at State House, I have a set of office principles written on the whiteboard. The first one at the top is, you belong here. The next is, let's get technical. Everyone can innovate, and I seek to reaffirm this with my team daily because we have a chance to make our world more equitable through innovation, particularly in the public sector. We just happen to be starting in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. <laughs>